Hello everyone. Today let us discuss the topic on sedimentation. As we all know, this is one of the important process that is adopted in the water treatment. In a previous session, we discussed about the aeration process of the treatment. Today, let us discuss about what is sedimentation. Generally, whenever we talk about the sedimentation, we used to attach one more term that is the sedimentation tank. So, let us before moving on to the understanding of the sedimentation tank here we need to understand what actually is the process of the sedimentation and what actually happens in the process of the sedimentation tank to understand the process we need to understand on what principle the sedimentation works these are principle of the sedimentation so the word sedimentation itself has the word sediment the sediment which means the particles that are present in the water which particles we will be discussing on the particles which we call it as a pollutants. Pollutants which, which may be in terms of the impurities of organic, inorganic and some colloidal particles that comes along with the raw water. Since raw water easily gets polluted with these particles, some of the particles can be easily removed with the, uh, some are which are coarser in size, they get segregated in the screening. After that, which are brought into the next unit that is the sedimentation need to be properly separated otherwise these particles will be further carried in the uh, water. So we need to separate the particles in the water that we call it as a impurities. The idea behind the separation that is the principle here is we know that many of the particles that are present in the water that are present in the water are having the specific gravity which is greater than the water. So because of that with the natural force of the gravitation these particles tend to settle to the bottom. So in order to make them settle to the bottom we need to give some rest to the water or otherwise these particles remain in the suspension and they flow for the flow to the further unit. So in order to make them settle to the bottom we will be retarding the velocity either by increasing the area or length of the travel and and we will be giving some time rest that we call it as a detention time okay so after giving some detention time that is giving some rest to the water these particles will be brought down to the bottom of the tank after that they will be separated this is the idea or the principle behind the sedimentation Next we will discuss what is the theory of the sedimentation. So whenever the particles that are coming to the rest at the bottom at the settlement of the particles in the sedimentation tank it will be hindered by main three forces. Let us check which are those three forces which hinders the settlement. The first thing is the velocity. The velocity which we are speaking out is the flow velocity not the settling velocity. There will be two kinds of the velocities we will be speaking on. Whenever we consider a media the water will be flowing. So the flowing water will also have some velocity. This we call it as a stream velocity or horizontal flow velocity. Whenever these particles tries to settle down to the bottom with which velocity they are settling I call it as the settling velocity let us indicate it as Vs. So now we are considering the flow velocity that is the horizontal flow velocity. This is due to the horizontal flow velocity always the particles which tries to settle down to the bottom are carried by the flowing water. Due to this it retards the settlement. So that is why this is one of the important factor that is flow velocity is one of the important factors that hinders the settling of the particles. Next important thing. Next important thing is the viscosity of water. It is the next important thing since we know that viscosity is directly related with the temperature. So whenever the water is more viscous, we can compare here with the oil and the water. Oil is more viscous means the particles are more densely arranged which retards the flow. So when water is more viscous, 
then the settlement of the particles is hindered. So in order to avoid this, we know warm water is less viscous when compared with the cold water. But in actual practice, what happens in treatment plan, there is a large amount of the water that we need to treat. That is why we can't go for heating the water or else we can't increase the temperature of the water. That is why this is not a parameter that is under our control in case of the treatment plan. Next important point are the property that hinders the sedimentation process is size and shape of the particle. Size and shape of the particle. This is one of the important thing that we consider since we are discussing about the particle itself. That is why whenever we consider the particles, definitely the size is directly related with the sedimentation. As we already told, size of the particle, if it is increasing, it directly settles down to the bottom due to the gravitational pull. And next is what is the shape of the particle. Shape also has an influence on the settlement of the particle. In order to understand the size and shape of the particle, how they influence the settling rate, we have few of the formulas that we can refer for calculation of the settling velocity. First one is the Stokes law. Now, in order to understand the third parameter that is the influence of the shape and size of the particle on the settling, we have two of the formulas in order to calculate the settling velocity. These two formulas are based on the diameter of the particle that we are considering. So, first one is the Stokes law or the Stokes equation wherein we are considering the formula that is the settling velocity Vs is equal to 418 into g minus 1 into d square that is into 3 capital T plus 70 divided by 100. This is the formula that we consider for calculation of the settling velocity Vs but only in the cases when diameter of the particle is less than 0.1 mm where in this formula this is the specific gravity of the particle, D is for the diameter of the particle in mm, T is for the temperature in degree Celsius and v, Vs is obviously the settling velocity in mm per second. Second one, whenever the particle size is between 0.1 mm to 1 mm, we will be considering this equation. This is Hazen's equation. Here the formula goes same. Here also it is 418 into g minus 1 into d into 3t plus 70 divided by 100. Only difference with these two formulas is here d is used as a square. Here the d is coming single. That is the only difference between these two formulas. Uh, in order to calculate the settling velocity by using these two formulas, definitely we need to have the temperature data. Otherwise, we can't use these formulas. We have to go for any alternate formulas. Now, let us discuss some of the important definitions that are used under the sedimentation. First thing is the sedimentation. So, this is the process wherein the particles, suspended particles and impurities that are present in the water are removed by the natural process of sedimentation by gravitation by making use of the natural forces that is the gravitation and also the natural process of the aggregation. So, uh, the tank in which the sedimentation process takes place is known as the sedimentation tank. This is the tank in which uh, area is increased and also the velocity of the flow is decreased. Since because of this action, the particles and the impurities that are suspended in the water comes to the bottom and settles, settles down. So, the tank in which this process takes place, we, we call this as a sedimentation tank. What is the plain sedimentation? So, we have two of the sedimentation process. One is the sedimentation with the coagulation, another one is the plain sedimentation. Here, the sedimentation or the removal of the impurities and the particles takes place only with the natural forces that are gravitation and the natural process, process of the aggregation of the particles together and then it will be removed. In next case, sedimentation with the coagulation, this is one of the important process that we attach along with the sedimentation. So, what actually happens in the coagulation? Coagulation is a process wherein we add certain chemicals into the water that we called as a coagulants that are added into the water that actually increases the size and shape of the particle. Due to the increased size and shape, the particles easily settles down. Uh, the particles even of the smaller sized colloidal particles that cannot be removed with the plane sedimentation can be 
removed by the use of the coagulation along with the sedimentation. So, generally uh, coagulation is done before we send the water to the sedimentation. Coagulants are added and then it is mixed in the process of coagulation properly and then it is sent to the sedimentation. It helps to improve the efficiency of the sedimentation. Next general term that is the chemical precipitation. Whenever the chemicals are used in order to separate the uh, impurities that are present in the water by the process of precipitation, then we call that process as the chemical precipitation. Next we have one more word discrete particle. Discrete particles are the particles that does not change its size, shape and also the weight during the process of at least rising and also the during the process of settling in the sedimentation tank that we call it as the discrete particles. Next let us understand different types of the sedimentation tank. Here we classify the sedimentation tank based on the size and uh, based on the shape and first one we are classifying it on based on the method of the operation. Here let us take the first one based on the method of operation first one is the quiescent or fill and draw type. Here the name itself is suggesting us that here we fill and again we draw the water. So here the simple structure of the fill and draw type uh, tank is shown. Here we can see there is a inlet and here is the outlet. Here there is a fixed operation. Around 24 hours operation is maintained or a detention time of around 24 hours is given. During the 24 hours we give the water a sufficient rest. So once the water is filled in the tank it will be given a detention time of 24 hours and then it is withdrawn from the tank. And then the sludge or the particles that is settled, the particles that is settled to the bottom of the sedimentation tank, we call it as the sludge impurity. So, uh, this sludge is taken out and cleaning operation is done for around 6 to 12 hours. So, whole of the operation uh, takes around 30 to 36 hours including the detention time also the cleaning time. It counts for 30 to 36 hours. Since for uh, one single operation it is taking a 30 to 36 hours one single unit will not be sufficient in order to carry out the entire treatment uh, process and whenever the water is in large quantity hence we have to go for at least two to three such units whenever we are choosing this method for the sedimentation tank next we, we are next it will be the type on the method of operation that is continuous flow type Next method is the continuous flow type. There the flow of the water was not continuous. In the second case the flow of the water is continuous. That is why we call it as a continuous type. In this case water is allowed to flow continuously in the tank. Next type based on the method of operation is the continuous flow type. In the continuous flow type the water once enters the tank keeps on flowing continuously. So, we know that whenever the water is brought to rest then only the particles are getting settled. So how the things are done here in this case since the water is flowing continuously uh, even though when we compare the efficiency this is having low efficiency but here the intention is achieved by providing the series of baffle walls and also increasing the area of the tank. Whenever we increase the area of the tank the velocity of the flow gets reduced and also we provide the baffle walls. Uh, these are the baffle walls. Whenever the, we provide these baffle walls, these will come out as an obstruction to the particles. Whenever the water gets entered here into the tank, they hit the baffle wall. Whenever they hit the baffle wall, the particles that gets uh, in the water, they get settled to the bottom. Otherwise, it keeps moving into the uh, outlet. So, since by providing the baffle walls, the flow is retarded, they get settled to the bottom. But uh, here some of the particles even though we have provided the objection will try to move out to the outlet. So only uh, provision here we can go for is the increasing the area. When we increase the sufficient area and the detention time is given in such a way that so from inlet to, to the outlet one, water one center up to it reach the outlet it has to take around 1 to 2 hours that in that way we provide the detention time in this case. Here also in continuous uh, flow type we have one is a horizontal flow type another one is a vertical flow type. Whenever it is a horizontal flow type the water will be moving in this way. The walls will be provided in a vertical direction due to that the water will be moving in a zigzag pattern. So whenever we provide the 
uh, baffle walls in a vertical position the water will be moving in this way so then we call it as a vertical flow type based on this uh, horizontal and vertical type also we have the structure of the uh, tank since for the in case of the vertical tanks so water flow is vertical generally hopper bottom is provided uh, in order to collect the sludge properly and also usually rectangular shape is preferred whenever we go for a vertical flow type let us now check the second type of the classification that is the classification based on the shape of the tank that we are using for the sedimentation based on that first one is the rectangular tank with horizontal flow type the second one is circular tank with radial or spiral flow type third one is hopper bottom tank with a vertical flow in all the three cases the shape of the tank is different and also the flow type that we are practicing is also different they are as explained here we can see the typical arrangement and a figure for rectangular sedimentation tank this is ideally for horizontal flow type since yes, in a, in this session we discussed about the horizontal and vertical flow type here in this figure we can see the horizontal flow type tank let us check the components of the tank here we can see the a pipe is provided for a entry of the influent a channel is provided for distribution of the uh, influent throughout the periphery here there is a baffle wall that is provided in order to retard the flow velocity of the influent that is getting entered influent is nothing but the raw water that is getting entered into the tank here hopper bottom is provided on one side of the tank in order to collect all the sludge particles that is coming out to the bottom there is a provision of the pipe that is made in order to take out the sludge that is deposited sludge withdrawal pipe is provided and this whole of setup we call it as a sludge hopper and here we can see the collected sludge is taken by pumping and then it is given further treatment here some arrangements have been provided for uh, scrapping of the sludge that is deposited at the bottom this is the floor slopes approximately 1% why the slope is given is to uh, make the sludge to slide out to the hopper then from there it is collected flow goes out in this direction this is the arrangement uh, driven by the drive unit so the, it operates and scraps out all the sludge that is settled at the bottom here some freeboard is also given always is some freeboard of around 0.3 meter is given uh, as a precaution so that there is no overflow of the water this is the ideal water level this depth we call it as a water depth and here are the adjustments for the effluent wear here the water is collected and water the raw water after getting treated in the sedimentation tank moves out in the effluent channel and further it is taken to the next unit it is usually uh, generally and uh, it will be taken to the filtration units let us check what are the things associated with the rectangular sedimentation tank they may be provided with the mechanical scrapping devices to scrap the sludge to the sludge pit located usually towards the influent end from where it is continuously or periodically removed without stopping the working of the tank that is why these tanks are called as continuous flow type tank in some cases uh, it may not be provided with the mechanical scrapping equipment in such a cases it will be cleaned periodically then such a tank we call it as a intermittent type of the sedimentation tank during the rest period the suspended particles in case of the intermittent type they will settle to the bottom and then it is cleaned out periodically and in that case the total working hours uh, near, it is about 30 to 36 hours which includes around 24 hours of detention time around 6 to 12 hours of cleaning period whole of it it will be 30 to 36 hours and continuous flow type of the tanks are therefore invariably used these days since uh, intermittent tanks takes more time in order to complete one cycle and the working of such tanks is simple in case of the continuous flow type as the water enters from one end and comes out from the other end and the velocity is sufficiently reduced by providing sufficient length of the travel this is the only disadvantage in this case the area that we are providing for the tank needs to be high in order to make more length of the travel the velocity is so designed that the time taken by the sand particle to travel from one end to another is slightly more than the time required for settlement of that particle here in, in this figure we can see the typical arrangement for the circular sedimentation tank this is the one type wherein a radial flow is provided and also a central feed is provided the only different thing is here is the 
the influent that is the raw water that enters from the center and then it is distributed throughout the tank here some of the arrangement is provided for the, that is the blades for the scrappers in order to scrap the particles that are settled in form of a sludge once it scraps down all the things are collected in the sludge sump and further it is taken to the sludge discharge pipe here we can see the arrangements two arrangements are provided one is a effluent channel here there is a overflow where so effluent keeps entering into the effluent channel that is the output from this tank the overflow where is for collecting the extra water that overflows from the tank as it exceeds the limit so this is the typical arrangement for the circular sedimentation tank now let us check some of the things associated with this kind of the tanks in such a tank the water enters the enters at the center of the tank into the circular well provided with multiple ports from which it emanates out emanates out to flow radially outwards in all directions equally the water does flows horizontally and radially from the center towards the periphery of the circular tank the main aim here is to provide uniform radial flow with a decreasing horizontal velocity towards the periphery from where the water is withdrawn from the tank through the effluent structure or overflow where etc the sludge is scrapped to the central sum mechanically and continuously from where it is withdrawn for the for the treatment by the method of pumping and the sludge removal mechanism consists of the scrap scrapper blades mounted on two or four arms revolving slowly the second type of the circular tanks are provided with peripheral feed these tanks are different from the central feed circular tanks in that the raw water here enters the tank from the periphery or the rim it has been demonstrated that the average detention time is greater in peripheral feed basin leading to the better performance two possible arrangements are both of them are beneficial here the figure shows the typical arrangement for third type of the sedimentation tank that is the hopper bottom tank with the vertical flow here we can see the components here it is the inlet channel here it is the drain off channel or the outlet channel here there is the arrangement for the deflection box and uh, water enters that is the raw water enters from the inlet channel and it is uh, drifted off evenly and distributed evenly by providing the deflection box it helps in even distribution of the water here we can see the arrangement for the sludge collection the water that is entering downward here it is given some rest after that the particles that are settled at the bottom that is the sludge is taken out from the sludge pipe and it is pumped off